All right, so I'm going to shoot you with my crossbow. Mm. So, <coughs> all right. Ooh, six plus my dexterity. That's total of 10 damage. Show me the crossbow? Yeah. Cool, I'm gonna use my fusion rifle. I'm, I'm sorry, you're, you're mm -hmm. but. Um, Do I have to roll to hit, or can the nanobots just steer the projectile towards the target, is that? Yeah, they can. Okay, great. Perfect. You're wearing leather armor, right? Yeah. I think in this context, I should do like 4d20. Do you think that's fair? 7d20? Okay, yeah, I'll roll that. The future's great. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Game Gorgon. My name's Indigo. And I'm Krug. And today, we're going to be talking about sci-fi versus fantasy RPGs, the difference between the two as well as like how to GM them differently mm -hmm. and how that works as a GM. Yep, these are all of the differences. There are no additional differences and these are facts and not opinions. And so therefore you should take it as such. Just kidding, these are not all the differences. Mm -hmm. There are more differences. These are just the ones that we came up with and thought were important. Mm -hmm. You might be like, well, but what about in this situation? Probably true. Mm -hmm. But this, these are things that we think are common enough that we wanna talk about them. Also the fantasy and sci-fi RPGs that we are probably going to be relating in our heads are Starfinder and Pathfinder. That's not what this is necessarily. Yeah. This is generic in nature. We tried to stick to things that fit across the, the bowl. Right. You know? uh, we're not going to be talking about specific mechanics of one versus the yeah. other. So when you're transitioning from sci-fi to fantasy or vice versa, there are some differences that you should keep in mind to make the world seem more real. Because if you treat certain things in one as though it were the other, mm -hmm. it's probably very jarring to what the players expect. Keeping them from feeling jarred is really important as a GM because when a, when a player feels that way, that's basically their way of feeling like you aren't accurately representing the world. If a sure. player's surprised by a choice that you made, bottom line is probably they don't agree with what you're saying. They're ju it's like a couple basic conversations mm -hmm. and then you should be good. Mm -hmm. The first thing to keep in mind is that there are a lot of differences between a speculative versus a historical setting. Okay. So let's start with fantasy, which is usually a historical setting, right? Yeah. Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder in all of those like sword and shield and magic. I would say they're pseudo historical in the fact yes. that, that yeah, magic yeah, yeah. and dragons are the thing. True. <laughs> there, it's more like the overall society is rooted in history. Yes. And then there are very clear deviations from historical societies based on those things. It's significantly easier to base a fantasy game off of history because one, we have writings, we have history, yes. we have knowledge of the past. Mm -hmm. While sci-fi, you're going to be basing it off of sci-fi novels. You're going to be basing it yeah. around things that are uh, not concrete, things that don't exactly. exist. And that's speculative. Every sci-fi trope, every sci-fi story has the potential to be endlessly different. The way technology advances isn't something we know right now. Yeah. And so you have things like Star Wars where like, oh, we regress back to the most epic warriors using swords instead of like projectile based weapons. Or you have things like Star Trek where it's like, oh, there's a benevolent society that just wants to learn, but they have to like deal with all these other societies that are evil or that are undereducated or any number of different issues that Star Trek comes into There's a lot with. and uh, he's showing his noobness. I'm just gonna let it be at that. <laughs> don't worry. Look, it, I don't... It, 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 was, it was more of like you... That difference in sci-fi of like the Star Trek versus the Star Wars mm -hmm. example has the potential to throw your players off really hard. Sure. Because if they're expecting Star Trek and you give them Star Wars, that's gonna mess with what they want to play. Sure. And so you need to be very clear about what trope, I guess, you're following, mm -hmm. if you are following one. If you're not following one, which is unlikely, but still, you need to explain the original idea that you have mm -hmm. and make sure that they're on board with it and that it's a setting that they think is gonna be fun. I think that that, that belongs in both fantasy and sci-fi. Like, sure. Because there can be very uh, magical and very epic. Yeah. Like, it could be Games of thrones in, right? But it can also be very, like, uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Like, yeah, like, exactly. Like the and, I, and you definitely need to do it for both. It's more important and easier to mess up with sci-fi. Oh, yeah, for sure. I feel that sci-fi is uh, very much based around the mechanics in which uh, are in the game versus fantasy. It's like, yeah, you can be a wizard, but just know that magic is like very shunned in this world. Yeah. And it's like, that's the end of that Boom. conversation Easy. versus yeah. like, hey, this is how we're going to explain this yeah. in the And you don't way. have to explain to people like, well, to get a weapon, you go to a blacksmith. That's just like intuitive. You might have to explain to people how to get a weapon in sci-fi land. Yeah. There's no blacksmith. Like, is there a gun store? Is, are guns legal? Mm -hmm. Are citizens allowed to carry guns? Because yeah, right now you have to get a license. Do I need to go get a license? Like, what's happening? It's really important to talk about that stuff. 
Zero sessions are really important for this. Like, really easy way to just like come together and talk about all this stuff. Just have zero sessions. They're kind of fun. I think it's very important as a group to have zero sessions unless, unless you are trying to throw the party together as if like they're completely different strangers. Yeah. And you're just like, and but at that point you're having a, a mini zero session with, with each, each individual person. person. Exactly. Yeah. This is one that our good buddy Owen recommended we talk about, mm -hmm. which is the availability of information. Yes. Which is really important because the internet's a thing. And like, if the internet's gonna be in your sci-fi world, you're gonna have to learn how to cope with that and sure. like put a set of expectations around the internet. Versus in fantasy, you don't got that. You gotta go to yeah. a library and look for books. Scrying, mm -hmm. like, how, what? how is information given? I think another big thing that kind of goes with that is that uh, the jobs, the professions that exist yeah. in the future. There probably isn't a lot of the jobs that exist now. There probably aren't drivers you know what i mean like we're dealing with that now we're losing drivers to uber and lyft or not just uber and lyft but like machines robots ai yeah they're the ones that are making those yeah things. exactly and so it's like in the future there probably isn't going to be a lot of star truckers you know what i mean sure. it's probably going to or, be like or there will be because some law went into place that said you need to have x number of human employees doing the following jobs yeah because ai is taking over too much work and we can't sustain this economy with all of the companies using like robots. But you need to talk about it. Like it makes, for something like that, I think it fleshes out the world and makes it easier to relate to mm -hmm. by the players. You don't have to do it with every little thing. No, no, but I mean, like, there, there's also just jobs in general. It's like, yeah. not everyone is going to be a shopkeep and, and, and a farmer, you know what I mean? Like it yeah. is in, in fantasy games. That's the majority, it's like- or like a guard. Yeah, you're a guard, you're a part of the, of the royal family, you're a farmer or a shop owner. Those are like the four jobs. Or you're a murder hobo running around or you're killing a murder people hobo. and yeah. looting their corpses. Right, but in fantasy, or in sci-fi, Sorry, there are like social media managers. Yeah. There are like space blogger, space bloggers posting to Facebook, which I don't think it made it to the final <laughs> cut of the uh, actual oh, episode. Owen, yeah. But that killed me. Yeah, that, when he said Facebook, I died on yeah. the inside, like in a happy way. That sounded depressing. But <laughs> I didn't mean but for there, it to there's a lot of just different uh, work that exists. Tons of work. Yeah, yeah. you could do because like once you're in the information age. You, you can be anything you want. You can just decide like, I'm gonna charge people for this. And it, that's a thing. If they buy it, you can do it. Whereas when you're in the, like, the feudal, I guess, era, it's, that's probably the wrong word. Don't make fun of me for that. You have to think about like what the society needs. Mm -hmm. Like if there is a need for more food, someone has to be a farmer. It doesn't yep. matter if you, your, what you want doesn't matter. Yeah. But now we can replicate food. There so, isn't there isn't going to be a social media manager for your farm. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. at the end of the day, someone needs corn. Yeah. And you're the only dude that sells corn. The farmer's daughter might make a poster. I'm just gonna leave the farmer daughter comment the way you look. Look, farmers have daughters. You can't just make it weird every time I say that. I mean, I, I mean, said that like I say that all yep. the time, but I don't. It's a fetish. Case. Abort mission. <laughs> Abort conversation. We're aborting this episode because it's the information age and data exists. Like, how difficult is it in your world to come across information if it's sci-fi, right? Is there information about everything online? And how difficult, like, can I just Google, like, what are the stats of this monster? Sure. You know, like, probably not, but well, then how do you justify that, you know? Well, not only, like, information, but the thing is, is that something that you have to deal with in sci-fi that you're not having to deal with fantasy is security. Yeah, you're exactly. Not, you, camera systems, there's cameras everywhere. Yeah. There's CCTVs, you yeah, know you what I mean? you don't have to have a spell, you literally just, like hack the security system. Yeah, if you're trying to stealth around, you've got to come up with ways to stealth around yeah, camera exactly. systems. Versus in fantasy, you're just like, cool. Wait till they go to sleep. Da -na, da -na, Cameras don't da -na, sleep. Da -na. Yeah, exactly. Unless you kill their batteries, then yeah. they go to sleep forever. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. Another really important distinction is scale. Mm -hmm. I think this is a lot closer than I was thinking initially, right? Like, cause in, in sci-fi you have like space and mm -hmm. you have all these planets and usually a lot of them are inhabited or an infinite number of them are inhabited because space is infinite, whatever. Mm -hmm. In fantasy you have like a world. You're normally locked to a world and the way they achieve a similar kind of a scale is with like extra planar travel, not extra planetary travel. The, I think the difference comes in that like extra planar travel, if you have a different opinion, I'd love to hear it, is usually dangerous. Oh, I'm going to the plane of fire. Shit. Oh yeah. no. I mean, there are planes of existence that aren't as dangerous. Yeah, like, and I, I wrote that. Like, yeah. they're not, they're definitely not all dangerous. Yeah. But with sci fi, 
um, areas become individual, like whole entire planets become tropes and or a small town. Yeah. Versus in a fantasy game, your map is the size of the US, but it takes you forever to get from LA to New York. Right. And so there's an infinite number of things that can happen so between point A to point B. Because you scale up the speed at which you can travel in fantasy, you also scale up the distances between stuff. The one shopkeeper that you know is on planet A, and your goal's always on planet B because the travel time, and you want like an opportunity to throw some wrenches into the plan, make the players expend some resources mm -hmm. before they get to their destination so that it's not just a cakewalk. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense, but you have to know that. Yep. Like you can't just let your players live on a planet if they can transport from one side of the planet to the other without thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Or you have to scale up your encounters to keep in mind the fact that they're gonna start every encounter with full resources. Sci-fi games, uh, sci-fi RPGs specifically, yeah. feel very much like video games in the sense that you, you're you in an area in a video game and you you know you're in a bustling town, right? But there's only like six blocks in which you can walk around right. in. Is there any other shops? And like the GM doesn't wanna create 3,000 McDonald's, yeah, exactly. right? You know what I mean? It's like the experience in one is going to be the experience in all of them. Right. So I don't want to turn around and have to create new NPCs that are talking to you. So basically I cram everything that exists in this one area and then that's the one area you walk around in and everything else is uh, that's the planet, that entire planet is this one area, yep. and then you fly to another planet and go work over there. Yep. And then if you're good, you don't let people know that. Like, yeah. There is a yeah. six block area, but the, the store and the other store are far apart. And if you go looking for something over here, maybe I'll just move one of the blocks over there. Yeah. So now that's where the library is or whatever. I want to tell you one more thing about that. Do it. The thing with sci-fi yeah. is that, specifically sci-fi that has roots in, in uh, fantasy mm -hmm. is the fact that there usually are also just different planes of existence right. so that not only doubles the amount of space it triples quadruples however many like planes of existence there are now right. that many so universes. if you go to the plane of fire is there an outer space yeah and then if there is what's what is that Water. like <laughs> it's, it's 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 air it's air water it's steam it's uh, just it i don't know i was thinking i was managing the steam logo when he said that <laughs> I don't know why. It's infinitely larger. Yeah, I mean, I think both are infinitely large sure. if you think about it. You oh, can do absolutely. whatever you want with extra planar travel. You can do whatever you want with extra uh, planetary yeah. travel. It's something you have to keep in mind that on on in your home plane, mm -hmm. there is basically an infinite amount of space yep. and you can do whatever you want with it with your players. Yep. I mean, just don't give them a ship if you don't want to play with it. Bottom line, make them poor. Chug, 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 chug. Jesus Christ. Sorry, I was thirsty. Yeah, you were. That's what we got. Those are the things that we think are important. Do you think we missed something? Let us know down in the comments. Tell us what the sci-fi equivalent is of the fantasy thing that you're talking about or vice versa. Why are they different? Maybe why are they similar? Because there's almost certainly always gonna be similarities between the two. Uh, and then let other people tell you why you're wrong because it's YouTube and sometimes that happens. Once you're done with that, like the video, subscribe to the channel to help us grow big and strong with our bones because it's like milk. And then you can hit the notification bell if you wanna get notified whenever we post new content. And once you're done with that, you can come over to Twitter and talk to me. I'm at KrugQT on Twitter. I'm IndigoQT at Twitter. At Twitter, yeah. At Twitter. <laughs> uh, and uh, you can talk to both of us at all of the following social medias. Ooh. But we're not done yet. Ooh. If you haven't seen last episode already, you uh, don't know about this. But if you have, we're talking about the same thing, about how awesome Void merch is and how wonderful and sweet that they have, were with us last week. And... Again, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for doing that. You, you guys should go check them out. That's, that's at, at the end of this story. Go check them out. They're sweet. They're wonderful. Uh, Surprisingly, and, hashtag not sponsored. Yeah, not sponsored, but made me cry. Anyways, that's it. Bye, everyone.